It is now my pleasure to introduce the next storyteller who says this about her favorite Jewish food. My favorite Jewish food is koko because it's delicious and the one food item that I get regular requests to make. The controversy remains sweet versus savory. This ongoing debate has sparked many heated conversations, but we all know that sweet koko is the only way to go. <laughs> Reading her story, I will always have your snack. Please welcome Robin Awin. <laughs> Reading her story, I will always have your snack. Please welcome Robin Ewan. I think we can all agree that food is almost always the answer. We are food-prompted beings and emotional eaters, which is why I personally feel calmer the closer in proximity I am to food. My family has discovered that even our Google Home smart speaker answers to, OK, Google. <laughs> right. This works well as a Jewish parent. There is always an excuse to have food nearby. This has become my go-to, especially since some of my other basic survival skills are still evolving. I've been known to faint. My gag reflex is easily triggered. And my default is to panic. I have three young children, and it is my job to keep them alive. So I compensate for these shortcomings with food. It serves as a great runner-up or honorable mention to a wide array of life's unpredictable moments. My survival skills were put to the test on that dreaded winter day, the day that our community got the call. There was a bomb threat here at the Savis JCC where I work and where my kids attended school. We had to evacuate the building immediately. I had been preparing myself for this moment for weeks, knowing that eventually it would be our turn. When I received the text about the immediate evacuation, I was not in the building. I was not anywhere near it. I have worked in this building every day for the past 13 years, but not that day. I was downtown starting an artist residency, something I had been looking forward to for months. The self-indulgent endeavor was already laced with gobs of self-inflicted guilt, but now it was a million times worse. How could I not be there for my kids or anyone's kids in this moment of community crisis? In full-on panic mode, I managed to get to my car, my heart was pounding, and I was sweating profusely. My thoughts were spiraling as I was flying down the highway. What if this time the threat was real? How did they know for sure that everyone was out of the building? Did I have any emergency purse snacks? <laughs> <laughs> I desperately searched my oversized handbag for anything I could get my hands on. As I inhaled a two-pack of apple fig bars, I frantically called my husband, who's the go-to for all important non-food related things. <laughs> Injuries, illnesses, life-altering moments. This definitely qualified. I peeled into the parking lot of the safe zone, which was about a mile from the J. I pulled myself together and ran into the building. There were kids in towels that had been pulled from the pool during swimming lessons. There were older kids helping babies and toddlers, staff tending to every need. There was a palatable combination of calm yet anxious energy penetrating the air. I finally located my kiddos, gave them a huge hug, hid my tears and fears, and asked what I could do to help, knowing very well that this entire scenario was my kryptonite. Snacks, the staff said, get snacks. These kids need to eat. <laughs> So without missing a beat, I began triage in the way that I knew how. I ran to my car where I, went, where I met my husband who had just pulled into the parking lot. And without exchanging a word, we knew what needed to be done. <laughs> I opened the trunk of our family minivan and we began pulling out Costco-sized boxes upon boxes of snacks, <laughs> chips, fruit snacks, pirate's booty, cookies, pretzels, Thankfully, I had a mix of sweet and salty, chewy and crunchy, not knowing what food combinations would be helpful in this very moment. <laughs> over the next few minutes, we had single-handedly fed over 150 kids and 25 adults. 
It was literally raining snacks, like confetti on New Year's Eve. <laughs> Where did all of this food come from, people asked. I wanted to say that I had just come from the grocery store, <laughs> I did. <laughs> I had it all stashed in my car as a parental precautionary measure. <laughs> Some people carry spare tires in their trunk, and I carry spare granolas. <laughs> so I just smiled and said how grateful I was that I was able to help, feeling so thankful that everyone was safe and that everyone was fed. Three years later, almost to the day, I still think about all the ways in which our community came together to support and take care of one another in that moment of need. Now, I know not everything can be solved through food, but for the 99% that can, I will always have your snack. <laughs>